Plant this combo and watch earthworms flood your soil in just a few days. You ever dig into your soil and feel like it's just dead, dry, crumbly, lifeless? It's a sinking feeling, but then there are those magical moments when the earth comes alive, rich, dark, moist, and crawling with earthworms. That's the gold standard for soil health, and guess what? It's not random. You can grow your way into that kind of soil. Not with chemicals, but with smart plant choices that do the heavy lifting for you. If you're serious about building soil that practically grows food on its own, it's time to talk about the underground allies you've been missing. And no, it's not about tossing in more scraps or hoping the compost pile saves the day. The real secret lies in living companions, plants that invite earthworms in and make them never want to leave. Let's dig into what those plants are, why they work, and how you can use them to build the healthiest, most worm-rich garden bed of your life. Earthworms aren't magic, and they're not mystics. They're living creatures looking for food, moisture, and a stable environment. And, you know, while adding compost or mulch helps, it's the ongoing relationship with the right plants that creates a true haven underground. What most gardeners don't realize is that roots, foliage, and even plant scents all play a role in shaping soil biology. Some plants feed beneficial microbes, others maintain steady soil moisture, some drop soft tissue that breaks down quickly, creating the perfect food chain from bacteria to fungi to worm. When your garden is built with these plants in mind, you're not just growing crops, you're building an underground buffet that runs 24-7. The key is to choose the plants that keep worms comfortable, well-fed, and protected, all without synthetic input. Marigolds keep worms safe underground. You know, marigolds are often tossed in for color or as pest deterrents, but beneath the surface they do something far more important. Their roots release natural compounds that repel nematodes, those microscopic pests that attack plant roots and make soil a hostile place for worms. When nematodes are kept in check, worm tunnels don't collapse, microbes thrive, and soil structure stays intact. Pairing marigolds with crops like tomatoes, peppers, or beans isn't just good for the plants, it's a protection system for the worms working underneath. And don't overlook the fact that marigold petals and stems break down easily. They become soft organic matter that decomposes quickly feeding bacteria that worms follow like a trail of breadcrumbs. The more you prune or deadhead, the more worm food you're dropping into the system. Nasturtiums feed microbes fast and draw in the right insects. If marigolds are the guards, nasturtiums are the clever distractors. These bright trailing plants attract pests like aphids and whiteflies, luring them away from your prized vegetables. But there's a hidden bonus. The presence of those pests also attracts beneficial predators like ladybugs and lacewings. That natural balance means you stay pesticide-free, which keeps your microbial and worm populations intact. Nasturtiums also contribute tons of soft organic material. Whether it's pruned foliage or whole plants at season's end, their tissues break down fast, fueling microbial explosions that worms just can't resist. In cooler zones, their dense coverage shades the soil, preventing worm tunnels from drying out, a simple but crucial protection against evaporation. This is the kind of plant that does everything, traps pests, feeds microbes, shades roots, and builds biomass. That's why it's not just a flower, it's a system builder. Beans and peas build soil from the bottom up. Legumes like bush beans, climbing beans, and peas are often grown for their pods, but what they're doing underground is even more valuable. These plants host nitrogen-fixing bacteria at their roots. That means they take atmospheric nitrogen, something plants can't use, and convert it into forms that enrich the soil. Worms thrive in this kind of environment. When nitrogen levels are balanced naturally, microbial populations skyrocket. And remember, worms don't eat plants directly. They eat the bacteria and fungi that break those plants down. After harvest, chop the plants in place. Leave the roots in the soil. Mix the leaves into the top few inches. 
you're creating a slow-release food web that strengthens soil texture and nourishes everything from the smallest microbe to the longest worm. Herbs like basil and thyme do more than just flavor your food. You know, herbs are usually kind of an afterthought in garden beds, but when it comes to creating worm-friendly environments, they're actually essential. Basil, thyme, oregano, and rosemary give off strong aromatic oils that naturally deter pests like whiteflies, cabbage moths, and even mosquitoes. Fewer pests mean fewer chemicals, and fewer chemicals mean more microbial diversity, which honestly worms really need to thrive. But here's the kicker. Herbs like basil are harvested pretty often so you're constantly generating soft leafy biomass. It's just the perfect starter material for microbial breakdown. Just drop those clippings around your veggies or into your mulch layer and let the worms come calling. Rosemary and thyme also act like living mulch in hot climates. Their low, woody growth shades the soil, preventing evaporation and helping keep surface temperatures stable. Worms, which avoid both light and heat, are more likely to hang around when the topsoil stays cool and moist. Dill, sage, and mint support soil structure and cooling. Some plants don't exactly scream worm food but still play an essential role in worm-friendly ecosystems. Dill, for example, with its airy foliage, allows sunlight to reach the lower canopy without overheating the soil. It also attracts beneficial insects that help maintain a balanced garden. Sage brings these dense root systems that, honestly, really help hold the soil together. This kind of structural stability actually matters more than you'd think. When worm tunnels collapse, it totally disrupts their movement, their feeding patterns, and even their overall survival. Sage roots, well, they keep things grounded. Mint, though, I gotta say, it can be a bit aggressive, but it's honestly a soil superhero when you keep it in containers or isolated beds. Its thick canopy shades the soil, kind of like a living umbrella. Plus, it contributes tons of green matter when you harvest it. And on top of that, its roots encourage microbial activity that worms just love to feed on. Just, you know, don't let it take over or you'll end up battling mint instead of building soil. Support the system or, well, you risk losing the worms. Even the best companion planting strategy, it just falls apart if the surrounding conditions aren't right. So worms need consistent moisture access to organic material and a chemical-free zone to really thrive. Plants can help with all of that, but you know, they can't do it alone. Mulch around your plants regularly. Try mixing soft green materials like nasturtium clippings or herb trimmings with dry brown matter like leaves, cardboard, or even shredded paper. This uh, mimics the natural forest floor, which is basically worm heaven. Never apply synthetic fertilizer or pesticide near these companion plants. Those chemicals honestly kill off soil life at the microscopic level and disrupt the delicate balance that worms rely on. So when your plants need a little boost, just stick to compost aged manure, vermicompost, or even compost tea. These natural sources are the way to go for healthy thriving soil. You know, keeping your watering consistent is super important. If the topsoil dries out, those worm tunnels can collapse and decomposition really slows down. Moisture keeps everything breaking down, which feeds the bacteria, and that, in turn, attracts more worms to your garden. Honestly, it's a chain reaction, and it all starts with you. So this isn't just about putting marigolds near tomatoes or basil near peppers, it's really about building an ecosystem, one that supports life from the roots up. When you choose plants that invite worms, shade the soil, feed microbes, and, you know, repel pests naturally, you're creating something much bigger than just a garden. You're actually creating a soil system that, well, regenerates itself, one that gets better every season, it holds water longer, resists compaction, and gives you more nutrient-dense food with honestly less work. Worms are the builders, these plants, they're the architects, and you, you're the designer behind it all. 
So, here are some final thoughts. If your garden feels tired, dry, or just kind of unresponsive, don't reach for that fertilizer bag right away. Start thinking below the surface. Choose plants that build instead of deplete. Add biomass that breaks down fast. Protect your microbes, keep things moist, and, you know, give the worms a reason to move in and stay for good. Because when you start planting for the worms, your garden won't just grow, it will really thrive. Season after season, from seed to harvest, you'll notice the transformation not just in your crops, but in all the life happening beneath your feet. Welcome to the Worm Revolution. And hey, if you learned something new today, don't forget to subscribe to Soil and Crop Central. There's a whole world waiting for you under the surface.